Uh, okay, in this video we are going through the example remains from the lecture. This is again is a rectilinear motion. This is an example of the free fall, and we know in the free fall your objects moves uh, along a straight line, which is called rectilinear motion. Then we can use the formulation we developed in today's lecture for rectilinear motion. The only thing we should check whether our acceleration is constant or not. And we know for the free fall, the acceleration is the gravitational acceleration, which is approximately 9.81 meter per second. And this is a constant value. Then the acceleration is constant, the path of motion for free fall is a straight line, and therefore we can use the formulation we developed in the previous sections. These four formula. Because all these four formula are developed for rectilinear motion and constant acceleration. And the free fall example satisfy both conditions. The first step, as I told you, you need to state clearly where is the origin of coordinate system. I put the origin of coordinate system O on the ground. You can put anywhere that you want, but you have to mention it clearly at the beginning of your solution procedure. The next stage is put the sign convention for positive vertical and horizontal direction. Okay, in this example we are just working with vertical direction. And the next one, the next step to, for any solution procedure is the units. The units are consistent. And again, you can use any unit that you want. It doesn't matter as long as you use consistent units. Okay, you have an initial velocity upward. First I list my input data. The initial velocity. The magnitude is given. The direction is upward and based on this sign convention the direction of the initial velocity is exactly the same as the positive direction we assumed for the vertical direction then its sign is plus and don't forget the unit meter per second the initial position of the particle because i put the origin of coordinate system is this distance a slope? Its magnitude is given 20, the unit is meter. The sign, because the initial position of particle is placed on the positive side of my vertical direction, then it's plus. And you can see clearly the signs are completely depends on your coordinate system and positive sign conventions that you assume. Meter. And also this is a constant acceleration. I know in the free fall my acceleration is G and is downward. The magnitude of the G is downward and because I assume the upward direction is positive for vertical vectors 
acceleration in this sign convention is negative because it's in opposite direction. Minus 9.81 and don't forget the units. And you can see my units are consistent. And the unknowns that the question asks, I can list my unknowns as well. V as a function of t, the velocity function, the position of the particle, vertical position, as a function of time again, the maximum height or elevation of the particle, because the particle, when your initial velocity is upward, goes upward like this, reach the maximum height and then falls down. And this distance from the origin of your coordinate system it's called the maximum elevation s max or y max doesn't matter this is just notation then the time that the object needs to reach to the maximum height we call it t sub index y max this is the time that particle needs to reach the maximum height and also the time that the particle the time that takes the particle reach to the ground which means the origin of coordinate system the t for when okay here the magnitude of the y is y is equal to zero because this is the origin of coordinates the time for y equals to zero we need to calculate it as well when you list your inputs and outputs okay these two are optional but it helps you to clearly decide which solution is strategy is more appropriate for your problem. First we look at part A. We try to use the formulation that we derived in the last section. If you remember from, this is part A. If you remember The definition of the magnitude of acceleration was dv over dt and in this case my acceleration is minus 9.81 now if I rearrange it dv is equal to minus 9.81 dv and if I take the integration from both sides I will have minus 9.81 dv from t naught t naught is usually zero the initial time till t arbitrary time and the other side the integration would be dv between the initial velocity and current velocity. And v naught already I have is plus 10. If I simplify it, v minus v naught will be minus 10 equals to minus 
multiplied by t or vt is equal to 10 minus 9.820. Here I follow the definition, but you can directly use this formula as well. It doesn't matter which approach you use. I, sh I followed the definition just to revise what you had, but you can directly use this relationship. Just replace the known values and you will come up with the same formulation for the velocity as a function of time. And this is for first part, we need the height or elevation as well. If I want to plot it, okay, plot is not a part of question, we just plot it to, I use another slide, just for better understanding. Okay. We had this formulation, V0 plus AT. If I replace V0 equals to the 10, and A equals to minus 9.8 meter per. It gives me V as a function of time equals to 10 minus 9. You can easily plot it. The V as a function of time, the initial velocity V0 equals to 10 meter per second. This is a line, the slope of line is negative. Then it goes here. At some point, the magnitude of the velocity would be zero at some time. And then you have negative. Uh, what's the slope of this line? Based on calculus, the slope of this line is dv over dt. But this is nothing more than the definition of acceleration. And in this case, we have constant acceleration, which is g minus, based on these coordinates, chosen coordinate systems minus. Then, if this is the angle alpha, the slope of the line is dv over dt, or equals to the tangent alpha, this is, from this, if I take tangent inverse from both sides, the alpha would be tangent inverse of minus 9, which gives me minus 80 for 170 degree. This is the magnitude of the alpha if you want to have it. Okay, what does it mean? For some part of the process, you have positive value of velocity. After some time, you have negative, and it's clear why. This is ground. This is my chosen coordinate system. Okay, my particle is here. My particle first moves upward till reach the maximum height. Yes, from this point till this point, you can see the velocity of the particle is always positive. Why? 
because the velocity of particle is always tangent to the path of motion and its direction is equal to the is exactly same as the direction of the displacement vector at the maximum height this point at this point my velocity would be zero and after that my, the velocity of the object is always downward which based on this sign convention is negative that's why for this part you have positive value for velocity at this point the maximum height the velocity is zero and for this part you have negative value for velocity this is the physical interpretation of what we worked out mathematically which are completely consistent and for the next one to find out the height or elevation of the particle as a function of Uh, you can use the definitions dv equals to v and from the last part we worked out the v as a function of time 9 point minus this expression if you rearrange it you will have dy t 10 minus 9 point t dt and by integration for the left hand side we have dy from initial position to the current position equals to the from initial time which is 0 to the current time And if you simplify it, your height as a function of the current position, vertical, the current vertical position of your particle or object is equal to 20. Because why not is equal to plus 20. If you look at your input data, you can see it. Sorry, this is plus 20, not 10. Plus 20 meter. Ten T minus T squared. This is the second part of the solution. Or here I started from the definition of the speed, but just to revise what we did, but you can directly use this formula. This formula S equals two and just replace the known values. Both of them are correct and you will get the full mark. You can directly use this formula y equals to y naught plus initial velocity time a t squared. And if you replace your inputs, y naught equals to plus 20 meter, v naught equals to 10 meter per second and acceleration is minus 9 point. If you replace, you come up with the same equation. Both approaches are completely fine.
and you can see they provide exactly the same. So now if we look at the part B, the highest elevation, if you remember, we said, okay, the particle is here. We place the origin of coordinate system on the ground. It moves upward till reach the maximum height, then down. This is Y max. Okay, the condition for this point is V equals to zero. You may ask why. If it's not clear for you why, when we plotted V as a function of time in the previous slide, it was positive for some part and then negative for the other part. We know from the calculus, if we have a continuous function and the sign of the function changes from plus to minus, definitely it gets a zero value at some point, V equals to zero. You see the sign of the velocity vectors for this part are always positive upward and the sign of velocity vector for the rest of the paths of motion are always negative. Then definitely we have a point that the sign of the velocity vector switches, which is V equal to zero. This is mathematical reasoning and also physical. I think from the physical point of view, it's completely clear. It makes sense. Then, again, there is no unique approach to this, to solve this part. I just follow one approach. You may prefer some other approaches. Completely feel free. To use any formulation that you think is more convenient for your solution strategy. This is what we had from section A. And we know the velocity when the particle experiences the highest vertical position is equal to zero. This is, a, I put it equal to zero. And from this one, the time would be 10 over 9.81, which is roughly 109 seconds. Don't forget the unit. And this is the time that particle reached to the Y max. This is the time. And also find the value or magnitude of the highest elevation as well. Then I use that formulation, that this formulation for rectilinear constant motion. This formulation you may prefer to use combination of the other formulation as well. Definitely you can use them. Uh, that's completely fine. If I use that one equals to y naught plus v naught t plus 1 over 2 a. For t, you replace this value here and here. Yes, and you know that y naught is 20 plus v naught is 10, a naught is minus 9. Then y at at t equals to 1.019. Which we call it the y max equals to 20 
plus 10 multiply 1 0 9 minus 4.905 to the power of 2 which gives plus 25 1 don't forget the units and the result is positive which is consistent with the chosen coordinates this is the value of the y max again you can solve this solution this part of solution using different combination of other formulations and completely that's completely fine there is no unique approach to solve dynamics problem definitely always you can come up with your own solution as well Part C, we need the time, this is my particle, goes upward and downward, the time that the particle hits the ground. The condition for this point is y is equal to 0. And if I put my yt, which is equal to 10t, this is what we worked out in the last part of the solution. I need to put this one equal to 0 because this is the condition for this part when the object hits the ground from this one you will have two time time can be minus two four three don't forget the unit second or plus three point two eight seconds but we know in Newtonian mechanics we don't have any negative time. Okay, in a special relativity or relativistic Einsteinian mechanics you can have negative. But in mechanical engineering, which is based on Newtonian or Galilean mechanics, the time is always positive. Then this is the current answer. And if you want to look at the curves, very quickly we look at the curve of these two. Uh, functions, first function was Vt, which we derived equals to 10 minus 9.8. And the second function was yt, 20 plus 10t, minus 4.905t squared. Sorry. Okay, this is my V, this is my A, this is time, and this is time. It starts from plus 10 meter per second, this is my initial velocity, gets zero value at some point, then negative. And we know 
that a is equal to dv over dt. It means this curve, the top curve, is a slope of the second curve. For second curve, you have a quadratic function. If I want to plot, the slope of it is positive because this part is the slope of acceleration. Okay. Oh, sorry, this is, I made a mistake. This is yt. And this one, v is equal to dy over t. What does it mean mathematically? It means that the speed curve is the slope of distance curve. Okay, then the, this is quadratic function. Its initial value is y naught equal to plus 20 meter. The slope of it is equal is positive for this part. You can see this is the slope of this curve is always positive till this point, which the slope is zero. And you can see the slope which is v equal dy over dt at this specific point is zero after this point the slope of the vertical position would be negative you can see you have just negative values till it hits the ground this is t when y equal to zero which we calculated here 3.28 second and this time because this is the maximum high so yes the y max this time also we calculated it was one zero one dot zero one nine second this is how you can, you, you have this kind of curves in the structures one for bending moment and shear force, which one of them is the slope of the other one. You can easily relate these two curves to each other. Okay, this one was not part of the question, just for better understanding and graphical interpretation of the problem. The last part that which missed from the lecture we couldn't follow it. Till now, whatever we had for rectilinear motion was constant acceleration. But in some cases, you face that the acceleration is not constant. If acceleration is not constant, then acceleration can be a function of time, can be a function of velocity, can be a function of the position or distance. We could, we've go through all of these three cases. Uh, again, the mathematical derivation is not, is not compulsory. We just go through it to show you where does it come from. And it may help to have a better understanding of the problem, what is not examinable and you can directly jump to the final formula or to the example. First we go through the mathematical derivation for general case and after that to make the concept completely clear we solve one example. 
then this is for the case that acceleration is not constant. Okay, in this case, my a is a function of time. It can be any function of time, sinusoidal, trigonometric, exponential, linear, quadratic, doesn't matter. We assume a general function. Then what we have from this, if you take integration from both sides, you have v minus v naught ft dt. This is your a. And we know if you integrate some function of time, with respect to time, the result is another function of time. We call it gt. We keep everything general. Therefore, v is equals to v naught plus gt. And based on the definition for the speed, we have the s, the first time derivative of distance with respect to time, is equal to v naught plus Yes, you just replace this one here. Then, if you take integration, you have s minus s naught equals to v naught t plus When you integration some function of time with respect to time, the result would be a function of time. When you add it to another function of time, which is v naught t, the whole thing would be a function of time, which we call it qt. Therefore, you have s equals to s naught plus qt. Okay. Then you have velocity as a function of time. and the current position of, as a function of time. And these two formula, which are worked out for the general case, are enough to solve any problem that acceleration is a function of time. Be careful, acceleration is a function of time. Because later you have examples that acceleration is a function of velocity and function of distance which definitely have to be solved using different approaches. Okay, if you found this part a little bit unclear, don't worry at all, it's not necessary, but definitely after solving this problem, this example, everything would be clear for you how to deal with the non-constant acceleration. This is the example. This is the deceleration provided by the oscilloscope. And definitely you can see the magnitude of deceleration here is zero. Then you have some non-zero value, which is linear, then constant value, then again zero value. Then definitely the acceleration for this process or for this object is not constant at all. Then we are not allowed to use these four formulations that we developed earlier because these are just for constant rectilinear motion. Yeah, rectilinear motion with constant acceleration. I can worry. learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar. But don't worry, we can easily solve it as well. The first step, the curve that is provided here is deceleration. For me, it's easier to plot 
the care for acceleration first and then a start solving the problem acceleration and this is time okay the deceleration what does it mean you know better than me that deceleration is Antonym or opposite of acceleration. It means if I multiply that deceleration curve by minus one, I can plot. The acceleration curve. Okay, this part from 0 to 2, second is 0, 0 by minus 1 is 0. Then from 0, zero to 4 is a line. The line here has a positive slope if you multiply by minus 1 you get a line with negative slope 4 to 6 is a constant value here is 4g multiplied by minus 1 gives you minus 4g then from 6 to 8 again is zero now I have the acceleration curve I can start because the acceleration is not constant as I mentioned earlier I cannot use the formulation which I derived earlier for constant acceleration for this purpose, I have to follow the initial definition, d for dt. And this is non-constant. If I rearrange it, d equals to dt, and by integrating both from both sides, I have v minus v naught equals to zero to current time a dt. And see, this time the a is not constant. I cannot take it out from integration. But the first part of the question says, what's the magnitude of the velocity at t equals to 4 seconds? Okay, I go through the... Then I have this acceleration as a function of time. It's zero for the time between zero and two seconds is a line minus two g t minus two for t. between 2 and 4 seconds and it's minus 4g for the time and 0 for the time which is between 6 and 8 seconds and this is completely comes from the curve that we had here. Yeah. 
8 is 2, 4, 6, 8. And this line, this equation is this line equation. You can easily check it by yourself. Okay, now, what we had here, this velocity, equals to V0 plus A D T 0 till T equals to 4 seconds. Why 4 seconds? Because the first part of the question asks the magnitude of the velocity or speed at t equal to 4 seconds. Okay. Then it's equal to what's my initial velocity is 100. It's given. Be careful about the units to be consistent. Yes, 100 meter per second, and this time is second. Then my units are consistent. Plus, I divide this integration in two parts from 0 to 2 because my function, acceleration function, has different expression for different parts. ADT plus 2 to 4 for this part, ADT. Therefore, my V is equal to 100 plus, from 0 to 2, my acceleration is 0. From 2 to 4, my acceleration is this linear equation, minus 2g, t minus 2, dt. Therefore, my v at t equals to 4 seconds equals to 100, plus, if you take this integration, minus 2g, T squared over 2 minus 2t two between the domains of integration. If you replace the boundary of integrations, your velocity value would be 60.8. Don't forget the units, meter per second. This is the answer of the first part. For the next sec section of the question, ask the magnitude of the velocity for t equals to 8, here, at the end of the process. Okay. Again, we have the same procedure. Just a little bit more mathematical calculations, which is very easy. My V is equal to V naught plus A dt. Because A is not constant, I cannot take it out from integration. And this time my T is equal to 8 seconds. My V0 is 100 meter per second. I divide again this integration from 0 to 2. My acceleration is 0. This part or this part. From 2 to 4. The line equation. And From 
four to six. Minus four G. DT plus six to eight. Zero. If you replace the values, your V at t equals to 8 second would be equal to minus 6 8 meter per second. Okay, this is one approach to solve it. We can call it more fundamental approach, which helps to understand the problem much more better in detail. But please, please, it's very important. Look at the supplementary video number one. In that video, I solved the same problem using another approach, which is much more simpler. For me, when you face a non-constant acceleration problem, doesn't matter which approach you use. As long as you provide a clear solution procedure, you will get the full mark. And the reason we solve the examples, at least at the beginning of this course, using different approaches to show you there is no unique approach for dynamics problem, and also help you to feel confident to come up with your own solution strategy. Maybe your solution strategy is much more optimum and easier than the solution we provide in the course or in the tutorials. Then completely feel free to follow whatever you think is much more appropriate for your problem. But please, please, it's necessary to clearly state your units, make sure units are consistent, and also the origin of coordinate system and positive sign convention for your vertical and horizontal directions. If you don't state clearly your sign convention and origin of coordinate system or units, then it's really difficult or sometimes impossible to follow your solution. The rest of the examples, you can look at supplementary video one. And thank you for attention and See you in the next lecture.